the first incompatible kidney transport a transplant rather in Africa using a new glycosorb technique uh, was performed in Cape Town this week. Of course, an incompatible uh, donation is when the blood types don't match. Well, patient Siobhan Mayer had been on dialysis for 10 years. Then her brother was able to donate a kidney to her, but their blood types don't match. However, Grotescare Hospital was able to perform uh, the operation. Uh, even though, of course, it is still a very challenging procedure. And I'm joined now by Dr. Zuneid Bardet, a nephrologist at Grotesquia. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. So, first of all, how's the patient? How's Siobhan doing? Well, she's fantastic. She's uh, I mean, over the moon, uh, has changed her life completely. Um, you know, I mean, she, she's commented that, um, you, know, you know, normally on dialysis, hemodialysis, you need to get up early and go to hospital three times a week for dialysis. And... She wakes up in the morning and you know about to get ready for dialysis, and she realizes she can she can do whatever she wants to with her life now, and so it, it has given a, a completely new lease on life. So talk to us about the operation because it's an incompatible uh, kidney transplant, which is when the blood types don't match, um, but also and it's a first in Africa using this very specific technique called glycosol. Tell us all about it. All right. Um, so normally the first thing when we're looking for a potential donor for any organ transplant, and, and obviously it goes for kidneys as well, is we, we would check the blood type. And if you uh, ABO incompatible, which means you, you've got the wrong blood type and, and, and there would be a reaction when you put that organ in, into the recipient, uh, you, 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 know, you, you tell the donor, well, you know, I'm sorry, you're not compatible. And uh, you know, you move on to another potential donor, or, the, or if it's a kidney transplant uh, patient, you put them on a, on a deceased donor waiting list, and, and, and you wait for a compatible organ on a deceased donor waiting list. So, uh, like Siobhan had been on on um, on that waiting list for almost ten years, uh, but then uh, this this new filter became available, and um, we 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 tested a brother, and they were tissue compatible, which we wouldn't have even gone that far before because they were ABO incompatible. So we, we sort of bypassed the, the, the fact that they were ABO incompatible, did the rest of the workup, and he was, he was otherwise compatible. So we just needed to overcome that ABO barrier. Um, in fact, a couple of these transplants have been done before. I mean, in fact, our team did, did a couple at, at, at the, the UCT private hospital, which is next door, a few years ago. And I think that one or two uh, uh, other teams have done, done it up in, in, in Joburg. But that uses a much more um, complicated and, and, and um, potentially risky technique um, of uh, plasma exchange. Um, so this, this technique is, is um, much more efficient because it, it removes just that one specific antibody that's causing the problem, the anti-A or the anti-B antibody. Um, so it's, it's a much safer and efficient te technique and uh, it gives us much more confidence that when we do the transplant, there isn't going to be uh, immediate rejection because of the ABO in incompatibility, which if there is, I mean, it can happen within minutes that the, the kidney or the organ can just infarct and, and you know, um, obviously with devastating consequences. Yeah. So glycosorb, does it, is, that, is, is the sorb for absorbing uh, the, the part of the blood that's incompatible, essentially? Exactly. Yeah. So, so the, the A and the B uh, blood groups are actually sugar groups. So glyco to do with sugar and zorb to do with uh, absorbing. So it, it, uh, the, the blood is, there's an initial filtration step and then the plasma gets diverted through this filter or column. It's actually an, an immunoabsorption column technically. And then uh, that column just um, binds all of those or as, you know, as many of those antibodies as you allow it to, depending on the time that it's, it's passing through that column. And then the, the plasma is actually returned to the patient. So you only remove that one specific antibody, which is much, much safer because the old technique would remove all antibodies and clotting factors and lots of other proteins in the blood. This one only removes that one specific antibody and you return all those good antibodies and all the other the good things in the blood back to the patient. So it's, it's safer and it's, it's, it's much more efficient. Um, we've, we've actually gone on and done a second one um, as well at, at, at the... Uh, the, the neighboring hospital. So, um, I mean, I think, uh, and there's been a lot of interest since this one. So mm -hmm. potentially there a lot of patients out there that might benefit who, who were turned away as, but well, donors that were turned away because they were incompatible.
Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, so, so clearly, as you, you've explained, that you could do incompatible um, um, transplants uh, before, but this new technique makes it much less risky. So how much of a game changer is it? What does it mean for other people who are sitting on dialysis three, four times a week? Well, I mean, you know, a certain percent of them would have had potential donors come forward and, and that and their only donor might have been uh, an ABO incompatible donor. And, and like Siobhan, they, they might now be on a waiting list. And, and the deceased donor transplant waiting list is getting longer and longer. We, we never have enough donors. And, and obviously, because of COVID, we, you know, for, for a period, we weren't transplanting patients. So the, the waiting lists, have, which were getting longer or even longer by another couple of years because of COVID. So, I mean, the, 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 the O blood group, which, which she is, and, and, and that's the one that often is you know, the, the most problem with ABO incompatibility, is running close to 10 years in some, place, some parts of the country. So that's a long time to wait for a kidney, whereas if you've got an ABO incompatible donor, but otherwise compatible, um, you know, this is a much, much better option uh, mm. if, if that is your only option. I mean, if, if you've got a compatible donor, then, then definitely you, know, you shouldn't be doing this, but it's only if there, if there are no other options. So, and I know you're a nephrologist, so it might be out of your, your field, but does this have implications for other incompatible uh, donors? I mean, you know, if we're looking at, you know, does the same apply for heart transplants, for example? Um, look, the, you do need time to prepare the patient. I mean, uh, this is normally done the day before the transplant. So often with heart transplants, you, you don't have that time. You know, when a donor is available, um, like a, a deceased donor in, in this case, you, you, you literally have to get that organ transplanted within a few hours. But theoretically, you could. I mean, it, it's, it's a very efficient technique. And, and um, if, if you, you know, if you started as soon as you knew there was a, a potential um, heart donor available um, and, and, and remove the patient's antibodies, you could theoretically do it for a heart or for a lung or for any organ. Um, so, but, but it works best when you can plan it, which you can do with a kidney transplant and, and a living donor. Well, thank you so much for telling us uh, all about it. And it's so wonderful that uh, Siobhan, your patient, is doing so incredibly well, having lived for a decade on dialysis. She is now essentially going to be a free woman, thanks to her brother's donation of the kidney. And even though their blood types don't match, thanks to this new technique, it's all so much simpler. Dr. Zunaid Bardet, a nephrologist at Khrodeske Hospital in Cape Town.